Today, we become legends. Smite's passives sometimes go overlooked in favour of more flashy abilities that have an active use, but some of them are ridiculously good, whether it be amping up your other abilities, giving a bunch of free stats, healing your entire health bar, and more. So let's dive into my top 15 most OP passives in Smite. Kicking things off at number 15, I have Thanatos' passive, Scent of Death. This one only just made the list ahead of some honorable mentions I'll show later, but this is an incredibly strong passive. Of course, there's the healing on killing enemies, which is great for keeping him topped up off jungle camps or minions, or burst healing in team fights. but the main thing that makes Thanatos such a pentakill machine is the 5 second cooldown refund on all his abilities when killing an enemy god. With a bit of CDR, Thanos abilities easily get below 10 seconds, so you're literally refunding more than half their cooldown every time you get a kill, which often results in death scything someone, finishing them off, then immediately death scything another guy and repeat. Without this passive, that simply wouldn't be possible, and Thana would be way less scary for it. At number 14, I have a simple one, that being Tia's Unyielding passive. All this does is reduce stuns, taunts, fears, roots, and mesmerizes that hit Tia down to one second regardless of initial duration. It's simple, but effective. Stuns and roots are the second and third most common CCs in the game behind slows, so this passive is basically always getting great value no matter the enemy team comp. But just to make it even better, this always applies first on the stack, so any crowd control reduction from your build or stacks of diminishing returns on you will apply after this, and the CC gets reduced below one second, meaning often you'll only be hit for 0.4 or 0.6 by any of these major forms of common hard CC. This passive is half the reason tier is so hard to lock down, and I do think it goes overlooked a little bit. Coming in at number 13, I have Osiris, whose passive is a bit more well known for being really strong. It provides up to 16% damage mitigation of both types, which makes him ridiculously tanky, and of course has the more active benefit of Ghost Walk, Haste, and free attack speed when he reaches 8 stacks on this passive. It's not super flashy, but it is incredibly powerful. Next up at number 12 we have Scylla, whose passive is pretty nutty even if it does take quite a while to get fully online. For starters, this just straight up gives 100 free power at level 20, which with the stat squish a while back is even more valuable now. But of course, this also grants additional effects to all of Scylla's abilities once they reach max rank. The most notable one is the AoE root on her 1, but her 2 gets 15% magical protection shred and a short slow after detonating, her 3 gets a slightly increased placement range, and her ultimate gets double the movement speed, allowing her to maneuver about much more more easily. This passive just does so much for Scylla that I had to include it on this list. At number 11, we're starting to get into some of the more crazy good passives as we have Oleron's Touch of Fate. Well known for being the only magical god who can crit naturally, this passive is the reason why, and that alone basically secures its position on the list. Sure, his crits aren't quite as powerful as physical ones with only a 30% boost instead of 75%, but the fact that he doesn't have to build specific crit items and can just invest in normal magical power and attack speed ones but still gets the crit for free is why this passive is so insane. He also gains an extra 5% power scaling on his basic attacks from this passive, which is a nice boost that makes him hit ever so slightly harder than other magical ADCs. Amazing passive that has no real analogue in Smite. Speaking of passives with no analogues, breaking into the top 10 we have Cleaner's passive, Phantasmal. There's not really much to explain here, she can literally go inside walls and cast most of her abilities from said walls. It allows her to play like no other assassin, and while it is skill testing to maximise this effect, when you truly see a good Cleaner wreaking havoc with this passive, you know it has to be on this list somewhere. At number 9 I have Tiamat's passive, which I always knew was strong, but didn't realise just how strong until I did a bit of research for this video. The main part we all know about Tiamat's passive is the hardened scales mechanic, where she gains 30% damage mitigation in ground stance for a certain amount of health determined by how many hardened scales she has, which she acquires from nearby god and minion deaths. At level 20, each scale has 250 health total, meaning for 1250 total health she has 30% damage mitigation for free in ground stance. We've all been on the receiving end of this, where Tiamat just does not die in ground stance and is as tanky as a warrior or guardian just from having this passive up, and it's the main reason it's on this list. But the part I didn't know before researching is that she also gets 110 healing from god deaths and 10 from minion deaths while in flying stance. This might not be noticeable in game, but it definitely helps keep her topped up when clearing minion waves and is a nice small burst heal in team fights. This is definitely a smaller benefit compared to hardened scales, which are the main reason it's so high on this list though. Coming in at number 8, we have Bake Kujira's passive, which is basically all of his auto attack related stuff. Converting attack speed to haste, and more importantly, converting 25% of his protections to additional damage on his basic attack 
attacks, which is half the reason Bake is so damn strong at the moment, even after this effect has been nerfed. His whole curse mechanic is also tied to this passive, which applies damage output reduction to enemies that have CC Bake, which is just a nice bonus. But really, the main reason it's here is that nasty protection conversion to basic attacks that is most of the reason Bake Kojira is so broken. This one could have gone higher on the list, but I didn't want to be too biased by his release state on the current meta, so I kept it somewhere in the middle. Next up at number 7, we have Apollo's passive, and this is where we start to get into the really broken ones. After 10 basic attacks or hits of his 3, Apollo gains 100% attack speed for his next 5 basic attacks. It's simple, but extremely effective. Since this doesn't scale with level at all, this can be a huge difference maker when boxing in the early laning phase, as no one can really compete with the free attack speed this provides at level 1. As the game goes later on, you can sometimes run into overcapping issues with this if the current build doesn't include Silver Branch Bow, but even if you're only getting an effective 60% boost from this, it's still pretty insane. At number 6, we have Anubis' passive, Sorrow, which I feel goes perpetually underrated by most people, as they just view it as a lifesteal boost. Sure, the 60% boost to all healing received from lifesteal is pretty defining of Anubis' playstyle of a sitting duck that gains survivability through lifesteal rather than movement, but this passive also provides 30% crowd control reduction for free at level 1, which isn't really tangible in a match, but absolutely does work in keeping Anubis safe from CC chains. But that's not even it. He also steals 21 protections from targets hit by his abilities, so that's a free 21 penetration and 21 protections for him, once again keeping him safe, which is extremely important for him. Without this passive, Anubis would literally be the worst god in the game by far. If you think he's an unsafe bad god with this passive, just imagine without all this free safety that this provides. Anubis might not be a great god overall, but his passive definitely is. Coming in at number 5, we have a true classic, Sol's Unstable Manifestation passive. Despite many nerfs over the years, this was way more insane on release. This passive is still really good in what it gives you. At max heat, this provides a 25% magical power boost, 30% attack speed, and a 15% basic attack damage boost. This alone pretty much turns Sol into a monster with auto attacks, even if she's not building much into that style. It's very easy to stay on max heat for a long time, especially later in the game once you get your 1 to max rank as it provides 70% heat on its own, and the stats and effects this passive provides for Sol are just crazy good. Next up at number 5 we have Kali's passive marked for death. Much like Sol, this passive has been nerfed a ton over the years, perhaps the most of any passive on this list, and now only heals her for 40% max health on a target kill when it used to be 90% at one point. The penetration against the mark target has also been nerfed down a lot and now only sits at 15%, but in spite of all the nerfs it's taken, this passive still defines Kali's playstyle and is the sole reason she's one of, if not the best 1v5 characters in the entire game. Combined with her ult and the ridiculous basic attack shred she has, she can just run through entire teams using this healing from this passive and it is definitely deserving of such a high placement on this list. Breaking into the top 3, we have Mulan's passive, Training Arc. Of course, the active portion of this passive is the 2 second cooldown refund on her next ability every 10 seconds, which is nice, but nowhere near worthy of such a placement on the list. The reason it's here is because the whole mechanic of upgrading Mulan's abilities comes directly from this passive, meaning this effectively gives Mulan 10% attack speed, 5% power, 5% movement speed, and 5% protections passively, 25% attack speed on hitting her 1, healing on hitting her 2, and 45 protections on hitting her 3. 3, and the third hit of her 1, the second hit of her 2, and the ability to grapple walls with her 3. This passive turns Mulan's abilities from absolutely awful and boring into the monsters they truly are, and you really feel that power spike when you get the third hit of the 1 or second hit of the 2. That's all from her passive, and while it might feel like a bit of a cop-out, if I'm going to include stuff like Scylla on the list, I have to also include Mulan. And at number 2, we have a similar case with Kakulan's passive, Berserk. This one doesn't really need explaining. His entire stance change and rage mechanics comes from this passive, and he wouldn't be able to do all that stuff without it. Given it's half the reason Kakulan even works, it had to make the list. Again, similar to Mulan, you could argue I shouldn't include passives like this that give new abilities or radically change other abilities, but that would exclude quite a lot of passives in the game, as many of them interact in some way with your active abilities, so I think it's fair to include them so long as the passive literally is that mechanic and not just a part of it. And before we get to my number one passive of all time, and Smite, some quick honourable mentions that didn't quite make the list. Kukul Khan's max mana to magical power conversion is insanely strong and can give upwards of 100 power with a normal build, sort of like a slightly worse Scylla passive. Jing Chen's recently buffed HP 5 and temporary max health on his passive is also underrated in the sustain it provides him given it's basically up permanently. Ratatoska's acorns define his playstyle and are incredibly strong in their own right, and Zhang Kui's free protections from demon bag that double while ulting make him surprisingly tanky even with a full damage build. 
world. All right, but with the honorable mentions covered, let's talk about my number one passive in the game, which is Yamoja's Omi. Yamoja is probably one of the most nerfed gods of all time, and while she mostly receives those nerfs because of high level and SPL play, which we don't have anymore, the sole reason she's been nerfed so much is because of this passive and the way it completely breaks the game. Being able to cast abilities with no cooldown simply allows Yamoja to do things no other support can. While every other god in the game relies on ability cooldowns in one way or another, Yamoja can just spam out as many as she wants, with the constraint of Omi of course, which is half the reason why she's so hard to play optimally and performs well only at the top level of play. If you waste your Omi, she won't feel good at all, but if you're patient and manage your Omi effectively, she simply does things no other god can and bypasses a core mechanic of smite being ability cooldowns, which is why I think this is overall the best passive in smite. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, as I'm sure you disagree on at least a few of my placements here. Hell, if you got the time, you can even leave your own top 5, 10 or 15 list down below and I'll be sure to check them out for some extra opinions on this somewhat subjective topic. Catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.